Hello, everybody, and welcome to Dot to Dot. Well, today I'm going to talk about what is Nolan's Cross. This is going to be the first of a series that I'm going to do on this question about Nolan's Cross. And uh, it was asked by Rick Lagina after, uh, in the episode of The Curse of Oak Island, they find that the stone triangle and the uh, stones piles that are on lot 15 and Nolan's Cross have an alignment, an astronomical alignment that brings it down to the date around the 13th century, 1200 to 1250 AD. But Rick says, what is that? I mean, what good is that knowing when it was built? What is its purpose? Why is it on the island? And I'm going to, in this series of uh, videos, I'm going to try and explain my theory on what I believe Nolan's Cross is. And the first thing that I'm going to start off with is, let's look at, uh, here's Google Earth. And you know, if you've watched some of my past videos, the thing about Nolan's Cross that I believe it is, is that it is the backbone of a geometry that is laid out on the island that is going to reveal places of entry underground. Now, in the last episode of Curse of Oak Island, we know that if it is done by the Templars, if the Templars are, or a descendants of the Templars are responsible for what is on Oak Island, they certainly had the capability through the knowledge of Cisterian monks over the ages they, and the manpower and the resources to do uh, what is proposed as underground tunnels on Oak Island. We saw great excavations in the last episode of Curse of Oak Island. But here I have, you know, some, these are some of the latest things that I've talked about with the drilled rock on uh, lot 12 and lot 15. And then of course, uh, going through Nolan's Cross, this was proposed by uh, Brian Farrow, that it comes down to the money pit area. I say that the termination is the drilled rock that is on the 1937 survey. And then we have the swamp cone, which has an alignment to cone B and cone A. We have all these triangulations and equal distances uh, from certain spots. And this is what I believe Nolan's Cross. It is the backbone of this geometry. Also, I have here, these are the actual locations of uh, Petter Edmondson, who found uh, these stones here. This is the uh, Kingdom Stone and these other two stones that uh, gave his theory, that started his theory on the Tree of Life origins of Nolan's Cross and how it is uh, related to Kabbalah, uh, Kabbalistic beliefs that the Templars may have uh, picked up when they were in Israel. So it's interesting, uh, the Tree of Life, and how it is situated on the island with its orientation towards um, basically the, uh, I think Olivier in his last uh, video talked about how it has an alignment to a, a basilica in uh, France. And even though these are long range uh geometric lines that are going far across the ocean, it makes sense that they would probably have an alignment, some kind of an astronomical alignment. But the purpose on Oak Island, what is, what is its function on Oak Island, is more, I believe, in a geometric uh, surveying of the land on Oak Island. And the thing I'm going to get into today is the measuring of Nolan's cross and how it functions as a measuring tool uh, 
for the geometry that's going to unfold. So I have a little presentation here I'm going to put up. And we'll start with Nolan's cross here. I'll put it on the slideshow so it'll be... So we have Nolan's cross here that was discovered in around 1980, and it was measured by friend Nolan. And these are the measurements of, uh, now these letters are not correct, and I'll go through them as, as I'm going along. But the measurements that he uh, proposed were 293 from cone E to cone D, and 293. Uh, 429 feet from cone D to, co up to the headstone and 145 feet uh, from the headstone to cone A. And the total distance between cone C and cone B was th uh, 720 feet. And uh, half of that would be 360 feet. Now, it was proposed by John, uh, Brian Farrow on one of the episodes of The Curse of Oak Island that this is actually uh, not correct, that it was, well, that it may be correct measurements, but the actual design measurements were in the order of these numbers, 1440 or 432, 228, and 720. And these are uh, considered to be sacred numbers, and they are used, uh, according to Brian Farrow in his book, were used in architecture and in building of uh, different cathedrals and such of the building of the Knights Templar, or the, the Freemasons, I guess you could call them at the time. So, these numbers definitely have a significance. The, the 144 feet is the 12th Fibonacci uh, number, so it is part of a Fibonacci sequence. However, the rest of the numbers are not. One thing that's interesting that, that, uh, that basically corresponds to the Tree of Life is the, the 144 how each section is divided into uh, equal sections of 144 feet. And you can see that 228 is 2 times 144, and 432 is 3 times 144, and so on and so forth. You can see there's 5 times, 6 times, and 10 times. And now this is the extension from... The, it's twice from cone E to the headstone, which is uh, 720 feet. That's how you get the 1440 feet. And the 864 feet would be an extension from cone D, this stone here, out to uh, past the headstone out to an extension of 432 feet out here. That would be the distance there. So uh, these Nolan's cross has not so much a a uh, sequence like a Fibonacci sequence, but it, it is showing us a division of proportionality, and this was uh, actually observed also by Fred Nolan. He noticed that it wasn't so much the the uh, distances but it was the proportionality uh, between each of these stones. Now, one of the things also is cone D, which is the largest stone on Oak Island uh, in the Nolan's Cross, is eight feet in diameter. So where do you measure on an eight-foot diameter boulder? And this may be one of the reasons why there's a discrepancy between what uh, Brian Farrell proposes, and what uh, Fred Nolan actually measured. And I believe, and I'm uh, convinced that uh, Brian Farrell is right on the money with what he proposes as far as uh, the distances and that they were designed 
to be these distances. And I'm going to show you why. So let's start off with distances. And this is a little dry, but uh, this is important information if we're going to understand what Nolan's Cross really is. Uh, the first thing we're going to stop, start off with is the measurements of a rod and what is a rod. Now, a rod was used in ancient Egypt. It was also used by the Romans as a measuring device. And it was a pole or a rod that was uh, a certain length and was a standard. However, the standards are going to vary throughout the ages. And the Roman pole was 10 Roman feet. And a Roman foot was... Uh, basically 296.352 millimeters. Now that's exactly, because this pole was studied in the 1600s and they actually measured it. But if Nolan's Cross is from the 1200s, it would predate uh, this exact measurement. Now they did use the Roman uh, system of measuring in England and France, and I'll show you that later. But what their standard was for the foot is uh, is unknown. Uh, they also used the Anglo-Saxon pole, which was 16 and a half feet. And this is an Anglo-Saxon feet, which is uh, a lot larger than the foot used today. The King of France used a pole which was 18 peed, which was equal to three toys. And a toys is a, stand, is a unit of measure that was developed by Charlemagne in 780 AD in France. Now the actual standard rod of the toys, the actual standard rod of the toys is known. It, was an, it is an actual rod that was put into a uh, castle, and I'll talk about that in a minute. In the 13th century, uh, perches, which is another name for a rod or a um, pole, had various lengths throughout history in the 13th century. One of the main ones was 18 feet, 20 feet, 22 feet, and 24 feet. And even as late as 1820, it's recorded through the House of Commons that they had these lengths. Now notice that I have underlined and in bold 18 feet. This is a common unit of uh, measure with 18 units. Now prior to the Anglo-Saxon uh, invasions, so basically ba before uh, the 900, or I think it was 700s when the Anglo-Saxons came in. Uh, the Roman foot was enforced, was used. Now, this is a distance that they discovered in the 1600s. So what was actually used uh, as a Roman foot at the time is uh, really uncertain. We don't really know. Uh, the Anglo-Saxons uh, introduced the German foot, which was 13.2 inches, and it was basically determined by using thumbs and palms. So this was something that is still uncertain on uh, the exact measurements, but this is something that the Anglo-Saxons brought in. Now, after the Anglo-Saxons, the, uh, the Normans came in from France, and in, in 1066, and it was a standard that was used was of common uniformity was the barley corn. And it is still, it's uncertain in history when this actually became popular in England because they were still using Anglo-Saxon measurement standards and Roman standards uh, were also being used in construction uh, uh, like the construction of uh, buildings or churches, we're, we're using the Roman standard. 
But in the 13th century, uh, around, they say, estimated around 1266, it could be earlier, uh, they came up with a document, oops, they came up with a document called the Composition of Yards and Perches, which is the same as a rod. And it was a medieval uh, statute, and it established the length of a barley corn, which is basically one third of an inch. And then you got an inch, a foot, a yard, and a rod or a perch. Now, this is the legal definition that uh, coming forward of what an inch is. Now, it was probably being used prior to the 13th century, uh, the 12th, I think it was 1266. They say that it was estimated that the uh, this composition of yards and purchases was was uh, established, but the size of a barley corn still varied, and these this is the the barley corn sizes that could be possible within uh, in millimeters. We have the current, the modern legal standard is 8.47 millimeters. So you can see even then there was a variation between barley corns. So this is what established one foot, which was 12 inches, which yet equaled uh, 36 barley corns. Now in France, the medieval royal of units and length were based on a toys, and a toys was the distance between a man's fingertips with outstretched arms. And this was introduced by Charlemagne, the king of France, in 790. Now the toys had six peds, or uh, feet in French, and each of these feet were 326.6 millimeters. Now this is established by a standard rod that was kept at the Grand Chalet, which was a stronghold in Paris uh, near the Seine River that was built by Louis IV in 1130. Now this chalet uh, eventually gets demolished in 1802, but in uh, 1668, the reference standard, in other words, this rod that was basically, it was uh, attached to a column in the Grand Chalet, um, and that column got damaged, and it deformed the rod, and in 1668, they established a new uh, standard according to that rod, I guess, that was basically deformed, and uh, it became 11 millimeters shorter. But what I'm trying to say here is this uh, 326.6 millimeters is an actual measurement that, th that somebody actually measured that came from this rod here. Now, whether it still exists, I don't know. I couldn't find any information on it, but it was an actual standard. Now, in surveying, the origins of surveying comes from Rome. And they used, which is the, the, pertic, uh, the pertica, and this is the same as a rod. And the rod was equal to 10 Roman feet, or a pedis, which is where the word peds come from. This uh, stands for foot. And the variations uh, that were contained in the rod were varied. It could be 12 to 15 peds. And sometimes uh, they were 10, 12, 15, or 17. And these were used in, uh, or were different according to their application and however they are applied. Now, there was... Uh, Roman land surveyors, and there's this book right here, the, um, the, corp, uh, the Corpus of the Roman Land Surveyors, which is a book on land surveying uh, known as the, uh, the Grammatici. 
And this work was preserved uh, for centuries, for centuries, and they had they still have the oldest uh, books or the collection of these book uh, of these uh, documents from the sixth to seventh century. Now, most of this uh, corpus, or I guess you could call codex, was comprised of a lot of different things, agricultural information, building information. Also very instrumental was mathematical or uh, geometric information that came from basically from old texts of Euclid and his uh, his geometry work uh, that he did back, uh, Euclid was before uh, BC, he was a Greek mathematician. And one of the things that comes out of this that I found is the influence of this codex uh, may have extended to the palace school of Charlemagne. So Charlemagne uh, most likely had copies of this in his palace. So This was something that was used for educational purposes, and it was widely read uh, during the Middle Ages. So one of the things I want to talk about is, and I know a lot of people don't like to hear about this, but this is the 1347, which comes from the Oak Island map by Zena Halperin. And I wanted to just throw this in here to show you that the 1347 is in French Peds. We believe it is in French Peds, which is the prior to 1668. And if you use the uh, the equivalency in millimeters prior to 1668 in Peds, and you use the uh, the equivalent in millimeters to a barley corn as 305.5 feet, you find that the 1347 can be equivalent to 1,444 feet. Now, remember, the barley corn sizes were 8.24 to 8.88 millimeters. If we use 3.5, 305.5, which is this in millimeters, it's only a difference to the current legal standard by 0.016 millimeters. Now, if you draw that out over 444 feet, the difference would be uh, minus 3.3 feet. So I believe that's right. Or would it be plus 3.3? Well, the difference is 3.3 feet. So this would be the difference if you use this standard versus the standard, the current uh, standard, which is uh, 304.8. Not much of a difference. So let's get back to Nolan's Cross. Nolan's Cross has these measurements. Now, if we use a rod of 18 feet, 144 feet becomes eight rods. 432 becomes three rods. 288 becomes two rods. And 720 feet become five rods. Notice that 18 is divisible to all these proportions of Nolan's cross. So I believe that the the rod that was used or the measuring that was used was an 18-foot English rod. And that rod had a measurement of uh, 305.5 millimeters per foot little bit bigger than the uh, rod of today. 
but this uh, 360 feet is 2.5 times 144. Doesn't fit into the sequence of being divisible by 144, but still 360 is equal to 20 rods. So this is what I propose as the how Nolan's cross was measured. It was measured with a rod of uh, English standard of a barley corn, and that uh, it was used in accordance, uh, or Nolan's cross was constructed in accordance with this rod and divisible by equal measures in order to make the standard of measurement on Oak Island through Nolan's Cross. Now, Nolan's Cross has a much bigger uh, role, of course, and I'll get that in, in my next video. Uh, but this is just the basics, the foundation of what is, why Nolan's Cross is configured in the way it is configured and the measurements between each of the uh, stones. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time.